Hey, everybody. What an amazing conference. I, I got to say, this is probably the best crypto conference I've ever been to. Um, I'm hoping you guys feel the same. And let's give a round of applause to all these people that are helping, from the AV people to the people serving food, to Solana, to the sponsors. What a great job they've done. So one thing I should correct, I am not a Helium founder. I am actually on the board of directors of the Helium Foundation. So easy mistake there. But I have been a part of Helium even before it was founded. Uh, I know the co-founders and everything. I'm going to tell you a, a good story about them soon. But I'd like to know how many of you here in the audience, raise your hand if you've actually heard of Helium or if you know anything about it. All right, some of you. And there's a lot that haven't, which is good, because I'm going to tell you uh, what Helium is and um, hopefully uh, give you some cool things about decentralized wireless networks. But first of all, Helium is a decentralized wireless network. And in fact, it's the largest decentralized wireless network in the world today. And it got here in two short years. But before we figure out how we got here, let's jump back and see how it was actually started. So Helium was founded in 2013, and that's very old for crypto. I mean, that's dog years old in the crypto space. So the truth is, it really wasn't a crypto company to begin with. In fact, it was a group of people that were just tinkering around with hardware. So back in 2013, Hardware 2.0 was a big, exciting topic in Silicon Valley. There's Fitbit, August Locks. Everybody wanted to put a sensor in anything they could, dog collars, all sorts of things. Sean Fanning, who created Napster, not the Sean Parker Sean that you see, or uh, the Justin Timberlake character that you see that played Sean Parker, which was the other co-founder, but Sean Fanning, who his nickname happened to be Napster in college because of his hair, some, uh, probably like somebody else we know in the crypto field, he wanted to get into hardware. And all software engineers at some point want to tinker around with physical things. So him, Amir Halim, who is uh, the CEO of Helium Today, and Sean Carey got together and started tinkering around with hardware. And what they decided is to build an IoT company. And many people don't know this, but the company was actually called Skynet, which is uh, pretty funny. Um, and luckily, wiser minds prevailed, and uh, they renamed the company to Helium. But back at this time, IoT was huge. There's going to be billions of connected devices. Uh, it was, it was going to change the world. Everything was going to have a sensor in it. And so Helium started. They had an amazing hardware company, amazing engineers. They did the hardware, the firmware, software. They built a complete stack to let people and businesses and companies deploy IoT networks. And they developed hardware and toolkits and things like that for people to build sensors that could connect to those networks. And being the pedigree that they are, they had no problem getting money. In fact, Sean would tell Amir, tell the investors to send the money. And Amir would be like, wait, I, I don't know who, which investor you're talking about, a term sheet, nothing. But Sean would just say, send the money. And so they had easy access to capital. They raised some great capital from some of these great companies that you see here, Google Ventures, Kosla, and much later uh, when they pivoted to, to blockchain, multi-coin, and, and some of these others. But back then, they wanted to build IoT networks. And they started going. They had some customers. They got some traction. They had easy access to capital. But at some point, it became easier to get capital than it took to grow customers. And they really ran into a fundamental issue at that time with IoT. They weren't the only ones that had this issue. Pretty much everybody in the IoT space had the issue. And to sum it up, if I wanted to put a sensor on a dog collar, and I wanted to know when my dog was lost, where was she? What I need to do that is I need some kind of network for that dog collar to talk to and transmit the GPS data. And at the time, there was Bluetooth low energy, there's Wi-Fi, there's pretty much those two things, some other uh, uh, networks that didn't really uh, go that far. But I, as a company, would have to build that network. I have to build those access points, those gateways, or those hotspots. And so 
something that maybe is a $2 sensor now required like a $300 investment and like I put that hotspot in my house, but I want to know when the dog is, you know, a mile away. And so there was this problem where we needed this global ubiquitous wireless network or IoT is going to fail. And at the time, they're starting to bump into this. Like they were having trouble getting funding. They're starting to think like, how do we evolve this? And there's two things that you should know about Helium. They have epic brainstorming sessions with very expensive whiskey, which seems to work very well. And Amir Halim was a professional gamer. He was actually the number one Quake player in the world. And so they have this interesting trolling culture where everybody in the company is constantly trolling, trying to one-up the troll. And during one of these brainstorming sessions, somebody came up with the idea, well, let's use crypto. Let's figure out how we can get crypto to incentivize the network. And that was really just a joke. It was a troll. But everybody wanted to one-up the troll by tr trying to be more serious. OK, yeah, let's get a white paper going. So one of the front end engineers builds a white paper. And they're all, yeah, OK, we could, we could do this. Like, uh, let's you know, figure this out, figure that out. And eventually, it got to the point where the troll became too serious to ignore. And so from there, they got their heads together and decided to completely pivot Helium into the blockchain world. And their goal was to use a Helium token to incentivize people to buy a hotspot, to deploy a hotspot, and to build this network. And so they came up with something like this. This is a minted miner. It's a hotspot. And they created a novel way to, to basically generate tokens. And so what they came up with was something called proof of coverage. So the idea was you buy this hotspot, you deploy it. Other hotspots in your area will challenge you, will test to see if you're actually where you say you are, if you can receive and transmit data. And in turn, you'll earn tokens. Now, the flip side is any of these dog collars or these toasters or whatever fedangle device is out there that wants to talk to the internet, now all they had to do was buy some tokens, burn it into data credits, which are pegged to a dollar, so they get an idea of how much it really costs to send a packet in fiat currency. And now they can actually jump onto this network with their products, get to the internet like they need, People that are providing a, a real bona fide utility are earning tokens. People that need to use that utility are actually spending tokens. And so this is almost a perfect example of a utility token. So fast forward to today. Helium, in just the last week or so, is broke its way into the top 50 coins on CoinMarketCap. Thank you. It has deployed the largest IoT, decentralized IoT network in the whole world, done it in two years, and actually has been the fastest deployment of any wireless network ever. Number two, it has nearly 300,000 hotspots deployed in 20,000 cities, 142 countries, again, all within two years. And the sort of sad part about this is that the supply chain problems that we're all experiencing, cars that take six months to manufacture because of uh, supply chain issues, really limited the deployment of these. There's a back order of nearly 500,000 of these today. These are very hard to get. And in fact, I'm going to give away one at the end, so stick around. And I think if there wasn't supply chain issues like we see today, I bet that number would be closer to a million. The other thing you've got to understand is Today, if you look at Lime scooters or any of these micromobility or anybody that is actually using the only technology that they could use besides Helium to get on a network, it's cellular. And those Lime scooters or those bikes, they all have a SIM card, which costs anywhere from 10 to $20 each in bulk. And they cost $3 a month, at least, minimum, to send the data that they need to. With Helium, sending data, depending on the packet size, but sending data of a typical IoT device say, once every minute for a whole entire year, costs $1. So again, we have basically built a global ubiquitous IoT network that works for small devices that run on batteries. That doesn't cost a lot. One of the smart things that the team did 
is they leverage an existing wireless technology. They, use, they built everything on LoRa. The beauty about LoRa is that today there's hundreds of millions of devices that already work on LoRa. So these devices work at a range of one to five miles. They're very low power. And because there's so many of them, they can immediately jump onto the Helium network and start using it. So as a result of that, we've just seen rapid growth. The other interesting thing about this Helium project is it's created a massive ecosystem. So not only do you have the people that are deploying these hotspots, you also have people manufacturing these hotspots. So Helium built the very first hotspots, sold the very first hotspots, but immediately wanted to decentralize. It's no point in being a central authority, just the only ones building a hotspot and controlling the network. It doesn't make sense. So what they did is they open sourced all the hardware. The Helium Foundation formed a, a, a HIP, or a Helium Improvement Proposal process, where any third party manufacturer can actually come on board, make hotspots, and sell them without any really involvement of Helium. The beauty of that is today there's over 20 manufacturers and the list is growing. We're still supply chain constrained, so it's still kind of hard to get them, but that should be uh, alleviating pretty soon. On the flip side of all that, we have the devices, the dog collars, the toasters. Now, in hardware development cycles, it's usually a year and a half to two years before you build a product and it becomes commercially available. So we're starting to see that now. We've been around for two years. Alisa Chain has been on mainnet for two years. We're now starting to see a ton of devices coming. And it covers a gamut of industries. Agriculture, healthcare, oil and gas. Heck, we have rat traps that, are sti that sit in a basement and alert you when something happens. If you get an IoT device here today, Helium is covered all throughout Lisbon. You can immediately turn it on and it'll work. But I want you to think about something. So if we look at blockchains, there is a lot of asinine use cases that people are trying to fit blockchains into. We're talking you know, square peg, round hole. It's, it's, um, it's amazing. But there's a lot of things that blockchains are actually really changing. And I think we can all agree in this audience that DeFi, banking, even the stock market is going to be radically different because of blockchains. But if you look at Helium, if we can do this for one, wireless network, we should be able to do this for any wireless network. And if you start thinking along those lines, could it be possible that something like a blockchain could actually decentralize critical infrastructure like telecom or maybe electricity delivery? Well, we are now launching 5G. Our goal here is to build a decentralized wireless network that you, your phone in your pocket, can use. We have partnered with San Jose to roll out 5G network there so that their low-income members of that society can actually get internet. We have announced partnerships with Dish Network, who's going to launch 3 million of their receivers with 5G Helium built in. And if you don't know this, Dish Network license, owns a license for T-Mobile and Boost Mobile. GigSky, which is another thing if you travel a lot you may use, has also announced a partnership to run their services on Helium Network. This is an amazing job in just two short years with something that was fundamentally a joke. Uh, and a company called Skynet. Thank God that didn't stick around. So fast forward to now. 5G is on the horizon. They're already shipping hotspots. And next year, you will see a ton of hotspots running on 5G. Network operators, the telcos, are actively looking for partners to offload or use their network in a roaming fashion, if you're familiar with that. Because 5G, the range is shorter, but the bandwidth is higher. And so the amount of density that their antennas need to have is huge. And it's a fundamental problem that they're going to run into that they cannot scale and they can't build the network fast enough and it's going to be hugely expensive. So they're looking for ways to offload that traffic onto other partners and Helium is a perfect example. We literally built the fastest growing wireless network in the world and we're going to do it again with 5G. So if you 
are interested in learning more, check out helium.com. If you want to, get one of these today, just one. Enter this link, fill out your information. I'll pick a random winner in about 30 minutes, and you can get one of these. Thank you very much.